Have you ever wondered why there are days or times of the day when every task feels like a mission to reach the Himalayan mountaintop, while on other days even the longest to-do list is easily checked off and much quicker done than you anticipated? It might have something to do with the kind of tasks you have on your list. For me, things like doing the tax return always feels like I will require multiple bottles of oxygen, even though it is usually only a matter of a couple of hours. And of course, time flies when I'm rehearsing for a play or a film, because these are the times that I flourish. It's what I'm burning for. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Romana from The Versatile Artist and I make weekly videos on creativity and mindful living and you can either subscribe here or you can follow me on Instagram or you can even join our community on Patreon where I post one to two additional videos per week plus some goodies meaning some of my work that is only exclusively shown on Patreon. All the applicable links are of course down below. Even though I've always been very keen on understanding our own nature, our body, there was something I have to an extent ignored. And only since the birth of my second son, I've really started more and more to acknowledge. It's something I'm now trying to take into consideration when planning my days and even my weeks. Of course, that is a lot easier for someone who is mainly working for themselves without a boss constantly glancing over one's shoulder. Anyway, we're going to chat about different ways to listen more to our bodies and live accordingly, because at the end of the day, not just you but also your potentially strict boss will benefit from an employee who lives with the biorhythm rather than against it. Start journaling your days in order to figure out at what times of the day you feel most energized, creative and productive. This varies from person to person and whether you are a morning person or a morning zombie, whether you're most creative at night or just before lunch, Either is right, if it is right for you. To work against that is the only thing that is wrong. Because it will cost you that much more energy than when you're taking advantage of your more energetic times and you're more likely to feel drained and exhausted. Also make sure to record how your energy levels change over the course of a month and over the seasons. Our bodies follow and are directly affected by the seasons. Like nature, we tend to be more contemplative and sometimes even more reclusive in autumn and winter than in spring and summer. Nature withdraws to get rest in order to gather energy that will unfold in new growth in the spring. Of course, also our hormones have an impact on how energetic we feel over the course of a month. I wish we'd be taught at school how to learn to read and understand our bodies better. As women, we can't demand the same things from ourselves in the second half of our cycle as we can in the first half, because the hormones do have immediate impact on our energy levels. Nature has a plan here. Ignoring that can lead to frustration and it can have an impact on a more severe PMS experience, apart from many other factors of course, but working against our bodies contributes enormously to how we go through that phase each month. Even though this is more obvious for women than for men, it's scientifically proven that men also go through cycles and that it can be very beneficial for them as well to monitor those changes in their energy levels and in their moods over the course of a month and live accordingly. Whatever your ideal rhythm is, start planning taking it into consideration. Take advantage of the periods that allow you to put more effort into everything that you do 
and make sure to plan for a more gentle approach when your body needs more rest and retreat. Planning the day, the week, the month helps me to have a better overview of the things that have to be done. And while this is probably not necessary for everyone, I also like to plan time for breaks, going for a walk to spark my creativity and for when I practice the cello. This planning should also include to plan for enough sleep. How much that is, is hugely individual, of course. Some only need six hours or even less, and others need more sleep than that. I, for example, need eight to nine hours per night, and if I don't get that for an extended period of time, it will have an impact on my mood, on my health, and of course, also my productivity. And therefore, I try to go to bed every night at the same time. Your bedtime routine should help you to calm down in order to sleep better. Meditation, a gratitude journal or reading a few pages in a book that relaxes you can be very helpful. Maybe you want to drink a warm cup of herbal tea that helps you to relax. For me, taking care of myself, washing my face, taking a shower and putting on a nourishing cream are essential to face down and sleep better. Start your day mindfully. This can be with a meditation, a gentle yoga flow, running, if that's something you enjoy. But it can be equally beneficial to just being really present when you prepare your tea or coffee. For those of you who have been following me for a while, know that an important part of my morning routine are my morning pages. The three handwritten pages sort my mind and help me to prepare myself for the day. They help me to evaluate situations, increase my gratitude and acceptance of what is, and they also help me finding solutions for things that are bugging me. Exercise in whatever form, especially walking, ideally in nature, has an enormous impact on creativity and productivity. Whenever you get stuck with what you're working on, or of course generally in life, it's incredibly beneficial to get your body moving. The resulting increased oxygen flow helps to find answers and solutions. What really strikes me is the fact that common expectations totally ignores the individual rhythm and is therefore rather counterproductive when it comes to the productivity of that person. We just get more and better done when we listen to ourselves, to our bodies. I don't know why outros are so difficult. All I want to say is thank you so much for watching this video and that we'll see each other hopefully next week again with another topic on creativity and mindful living. And if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up and show me that you like it. That would be great. And in the meanwhile, stay healthy, stay safe and stay creative. Bye bye.